Hi and welcome to another episode and what we've got here is a Oculus Quest 2, obviously. I'm sure plenty of people have seen them by now, but there's the headset. I've got the Elite battery gubbins to go onto the back to give it longer battery life and a better way of strapping it to your head. Some people have said that these snap off, but I've had mine for two, three weeks now. And luckily it's been fine and obviously these are controllers and I've put some uh, protectors on so that uh, if I hit myself or the wall or you know something that might break them instead of getting a chip on the plastic it's just going to give a bit of a, a bump on the the rubber that's around or the silicone or whatever it's made out of but that's not really what I want to show you today what I want to show you is it's possible to play a retro computer on here and it has been for some time I'm gonna get that loaded up give you the full screen of it and you'll see what I'm seeing in you'll see it in 2d but you'll see where my heads pointing and what controllers I'm doing with it and everything and we'll have a look but by the title you probably already figured it out okay so I'm sat down at the moment we can have a quick look round here for those that don't get to play around on a Quest 2, I'm going to stand up in the real world so I can spin around easier. And that looks great, doesn't it? This little fan to help keep things cool. Where you've got the moon, so this area is obviously dedicated of never raining, even though there's tropical, <laughs> tropical trees. It looks like the Grand Canyon style type thing across there. And the hot air balloons going up through the sky, and as you can see, the houses of what this place probably looks like from over there. But I want to sit down again in the real world because the way that the program starts, um, what we're going to use, which you know from the title already, is a Commodore 64 emulator. But it sort of starts you off as if you sat down. Now the guy that made this dedicated it to his dad. And as we can see here, it's made by open PC reviews. Now it's great if you give me a subscription, so if you haven't already, please do. But by all means, nip across to his channel and give him a subscribe and tell him I sent you. That'd be really nice of you to do. Obviously do that after you've watched this video. Um, but yes, I'm sort of going to skip by this. This is the instructions of what you've got to do to get stuff going, and it's easy enough. I got this onto my Quest 2 using um, side quest which you can find and I'll put a link to that as well but you can basically get it going by using your mobile phone or your PC and as you can see I'll just glide myself across just a little bit it sort of does set you off as being if you sat down even though there's not a chair that's why I've sat down in the real world because otherwise it'd have me sat down here while I'm stood up but I want to be able to stand up because I want to be able to look up on the shelves in a moment. But this is basically just a normal Commodore 64 emulator. And it works. I mean, you can, you know, type. I can point at the right places. See, it works perfectly fine. And you can even pick up some disks. And to do that, really, you create a folder on the Quest 2 on your computer and call it C64, and then you drop in your .d64 image files, and then you'll end up with a row of disks, just here, and you put them through. They're all, at the moment, um, side A and side B, of all this. it's all the same as side A, and as you can see, I've been a little bit silly, and selected a ZX Spectrum thing, which I've never actually ran before on a Commodore 64, so let's have a look on what it does. So I'll click the disk, Slides out, it's up the disk drive, and it goes in. As a shortcut, we can use F1 and then press return, and it will super fast load it. So, as you can hear, it's got all the whirring of the floppy disk drive in your head. And now, this is a pretend Spectrum emulator on the Commodore 64, which you can actually do some stuff with. So we can actually do this, we can do 10, space, print. This is going to get all the Commodore 64 people so angry. Comment down below on how annoyed you are. There we go, I need to press a button. 
to do. Hello. Oh. It's a bit dodgy to type. You wouldn't want to type out a whole program, obviously, on here. Unless you're a glutton for punishment. But the whole idea of doing it is like it's great that it does actually work. And then we can press uh let's do the whole thing. Twenty to ten. Return. Press run. There you go. See it looks like a spectrum. Omnicon of the sixty four on a quest two. I mean what is the will coming to? But this is just a bit of fun right now. I mean, you can pick things up and look at edge connectors and, you know, I can pick the drive up because there's no cables. It's all wireless. Look at that. Oh, you can bang the monitor around a bit. Yeah. Oh, there's a cassette there. Look, I hadn't seen that before. Whoops. Dropped the cassette. Yeah, Everything is a bit um, wibbly wobbly. So you might want to just <laughs> leave it where it is. I'm just, oh, I lost a joystick as well. But you can use a joystick in the emulator of the Commodore 64 bit. So there's a few sort of fun things you have to do in that. I really do hope all this volume is getting recorded properly. I'm using the mic built into the Oculus. So it might be a little bit different. Not quite the same as my mic that I use normally. So let's even got the actual tape in there. That's clever. Let me see. Oh, it fell through the Commodore 64. That's unusual. All right, what have we got across here? I thought there was a... I swear blind there was a disky bit. To... Where's that gone? I must have lost it on the floor somewhere. There was actually a disc thing that you put in here that you... You know, in the good old days, you would hold it up and look through it, but it doesn't actually work. It's just there to look at. What have we got down here? We've got a lunchbox. Oh, I can't actually reach down to get it. Wait a minute. Let me just reset the angle. There we go. Let's see if I can reach down and get it out. No. I'm obviously too high up. I don't know why I'm too high up. That's strange. I can't reach down to the floor. I'm actually punching my own floor here. This is its not the way it's been worked before when I've run this program. Hmm. But there is a He-Man lunchbox down there. I've obviously got the settings set just a little bit wrong. That's over here. Well, cue card. QR codes. Put it through there. Don't know what this is about, actually. If anyone knows what that's about, let me know. Posters. Can we play any of these? Oh, look, the sofa. Is that Ashen's sofa? If you know about YouTube, put Ashen's. It looks like Ashen's sofa, that. Oh, look, I've got something from Boundland. Woo. <laughs> anyway, posters, posters, posters. By the way, I'm only joking. I like watching some of Ashen's uh, videos. I've watched a fair few of them. A Star Trek model. Princess Bride poster, Willow poster, Never Ending Story. How close can we get to it? Walk through to the sofa. How clear is it? Very clear. Move back a bit. Now let's go back to the desk. Oh, just a little bit smoother than that, maybe. And this is the bit where I want to be able to stand up, because I want to be able to look at the shelves. So, Optimus Prime. Ooh, it makes it look like I'm shaking like mad, but I'm not. I've actually got a quite steady hand. Battlestar Galactica. Which is another Battlestar Galactica up here. I mean, wait, let's put this up here with Battlestar Galactica. Oh, the good guys. Yeah, Galactica. And the bad guys. Star Wars. 
some more Star Wars. R2-D2's in there. Seems to have a bit of a pointy head for R2-D2. But, um, oops. That's cool, that though. That looks very good. I don't think there's anything up there, but I'm not tall enough to reach all the way up there. And we've got an RC controller over here. RC. Yeah, different RC controller, which seems to be sat on the wall a little bit. And then we've got the DeLorean parked outside. Now, as I said with this, I'm just sort of showing it for people that don't normally get to play around with the Quest 2 or in VR. Let's have a look if we can actually pick these um, handhelds up. I don't think everything's possible to pick up. No, nope, I can't pick them up, sadly. Move across. VCR. Oh look, the label on that one's the wrong way around. Mirror image. Which is a bit weird because that one's the right way around. Just image the wrong way around for whatever reason. Explorers. Haven't seen that movie in years. Glow in the dark. Uh, moon. Can't grab that either, but look, Enterprise, NCC-1701A, so it's one of the, definitely the other ones. Well, why is there pictures of trees on the side? Strange. So some shirts, some shoes, let's go in the closet. Can we move things around in here? No. Let's move. Can we bend down and move a box? No. So it's just images to look at. Is that shirt the same on the other side? No. There we go. So let's... Oh, there's some more posters there. I missed that one. Indiana Jones, another Star Trek one. Oh, and there's another Star Wars thing there. How close can we get? Oh, that looks nice as well. But let's go have a look at that DeLorean. And to do that, whoa, it's inside the desk. Sorry. Let's go through the door. Look down. Whoa, I'm so tall. Oops. There we go. And everything on the outside is... All the walls haven't got textures on the outside, which is understandable because it's safe space. Let's glide across to the DeLorean. And there we go. I've actually got wires sticking out of it. Oh, that'd be so cool if you could open it up and have a look inside. I know it's a Commodore 64 emulator. What am I talking about? But it would be cool if it was possible. I know some people actually sort of build them to look like this in real life. I don't blame. I think I would as well if I had a DeLorean. But let's have a look over here. There's the moon with sunglasses on. He needs it, obviously. Oh, there's a bit of a gap in the textures here. Doesn't matter. It's one of those things. But that's what it looks like. And some things are a little bit more easier to control in other programs and stuff, but this is a cool little thing just to sit down and use a Commodore 64 emulator in a different way. And if it's all that you've got with you is your Quest 2, then it's one way to get your Commodore 64 fix. Because you can use the joysticks. Um, yeah, you can use the joysticks on the controllers themselves. I know they look like the, uh, I think it's the Quest 1 controllers, but I do have a Quest 2, obviously, you've seen it at the start of the video. But yeah, I mean, hopefully he adds to this 
uh, bit by bit. From his videos, I understand he's not had a great two or three months stuck in hospital. So I wish him well and hope he gets a lot better. Yeah, past whatever it is that um, has been getting him. Well, I know, but I'm not going to be mentioning those words in my video. We all know what he's ended up having, but his, uh, I think he's had his appendix out as well. But even so, he's still been making videos and adding to adding to it. So, great guy. What else can I say? As I said before, great if he did some subscribing. Hit that like button. You know, talk down in notifications. Become a patron. All that fun stuff. But as always, happy gaming.